I was helping a customer today figure out a problem that he had, and I've created a UI here that's similar to what he was doing uh, to show you what I learned helping him. And he was trying to do something where there was an arrow pointing down when there was content to scroll down to. And then once you scroll down to the bottom, that arrow would go away. But an arrow at the top would appear to show you that there was content that you could scroll up to. Uh, so I've got this stuff here, like there's some sample content that I can scroll through. And I'll open the preview just to show you. Oh, I haven't made it scroll yet, so nothing, nothing moves. But let me just select all these boxes and click the scroll group button to put them all inside of a scroll group. And I want this to go all the way to the top. And I might as well put these onto the edges and give this a little padding at the bottom. Okay, now it scrolls. So I want to make a behavior that encompasses this scrolling content and these two triangles. And so I'm just going to put a group around all of those things. And I'll put my behavior on that group. But first I want to hide this uh, up arrow because when this behavior uh, starts, I want this to be hidden. So this is kind of the default state. An arrow at the bottom that shows that there's stuff to scroll down to. But when you start out, there's nothing to scroll up to, so there's no arrow at the top. All right, let's add a behavior. I'm going to select this group, click the behavior button, and here I am in the behavior designer. I see that bottom arrow. I'm going to rename the initial state to top. And then I'll make a new state, and I'll call it middle. I'm going to have three states here. The last one I'll call bottom. Okay, in the top state, that's already taken care of. The middle state, I want to have both the buttons, or both the arrows showing. And it, when I reach the bottom, this one should be hidden, and the top one should show, indicating that I can scroll back up. So I'm in the middle, I can scroll both ways, so the arrow points top and bottom. All right, now how do I navigate between these states? Well, from the top state, that's the initial state, I'll make a link on the scroll group going to the middle state. And so here's my scroll range, and that means when I scroll over the first, uh, I'm going to put about 50 points here. When I scroll over that first area, I'll arrive at the middle state, which means I'll go from having uh, just an arrow at the bottom to arrows at the top and bottom. So let's try that out. Cool. So when I scroll a little bit, that first arrow appears. And when I scroll back, thanks to the auto reverse feature, it hides as I scroll back up. All right, so how do I get from the middle state to the bottom state where the bottom arrow is gone? Well, another scroll gesture. So from the scroll group, I'll link it to the bottom state. And I'm going to need to adjust the range. So this time it's going to happen a bit lower. Now sometimes you might think, like, where, where exactly should I place this range? And uh, let me make sure that it's 50. Yeah, that looks good. So where am I going to put this? Well, I want it to happen when I hit the bottom. So like maybe I should put it down close to the bottom. Let's try that. So that one appears. And this one's still here. And that's because I haven't actually reached this. For me to reach here, that means that this uh, red block uh, needs to be going off the top of the screen. So if I push really far, now you can see it to start to happen. So it happens way up here. The way that you figure this out, the easy way, is to look what's at the top of the screen when I reach the bottom. And I can see it's this green uh, rectangle, and it's just this uh, kind of fake text, the last line here, just reaches the top. So this range, I think, should be right here where the top of it is, actually maybe the bottom of it is um, right at that, that point that we saw hitting the top of the screen. Okay, let's try again. So I scroll a little bit, now I'm in the middle, I see both arrows, and as I keep scrolling, notice I'm, I'm reaching that area here, the top of that, that line, and as I reach it, the bottom arrow disappears. So when I get to the bottom, now it's telling me you can scroll up. And when I'm in the middle, it's telling me you can scroll either way. And when I'm at the top, it's telling me that I can scroll down. Cool, so my behavior works with those three states. It's really nice. And I'll call this uh, scroll indicator. And I wanna do one more thing just for fun. I'm gonna select this bottom uh, triangle, click the behavior button to add a behavior around that, a new state. 
I'm going to slide it down, or I'll slide it up just a little bit. And from the initial state, I'll make a timer link that goes to the new state. Set the timeout to zero. And from new state, timer link to the initial state. Set the timeout to zero on that. And I'll use classic easing. I want to use like 600 milliseconds. And that causes that bottom arrow to bounce up and down. Now I'd like to do the same thing for the top one. And I can just reuse this. I'll name it bounce arrow. Exit out of the behavior designer. And I'll select this top arrow, which I can't currently see, but that's fine. I'm still able to select it. I'll add a group around that. And on that group, I will add the bounce arrow behavior. Cool, now both the arrows are bouncing. And uh, maybe a little gratuitous, but kind of a cool effect. And it's made possible by the auto reverse scroll gesture feature in Flinto 2.1.